Hey guys, Jack Leeson here and with one of my best friends, Tony, who's introduced me to this new software called TrendSpider, an incredible software scanning tool for stocks and Forex. And we're gonna do a deep dive into how this software works and how you can use it to your benefit. So Tony, tell me about TrendSpider. Thanks. Yeah. All right, guys, here we are on the screen and uh, one of my friends for over 10 years, He's been trading for just as long as I've known him. One of the few people I know that's been in the game just as long as I have. Tony, and he's going to be going over a full detail explanation, diving into the best of the best of what Trend Spider has to offer. Now, me personally, um, it's, I'm very wary about trying new softwares, but if I get a personal recommendation from somebody I trust, somebody who I know knows trading, I'm going to take a look into it. So that's what we're doing here today. We're going to do a full tutorial breakdown of the TrendSpider software. And if you want to get the TrendSpider software for free, you can click the link below in this video. So Tony, I want to start off by asking the question simply, who is TrendSpider built for? What type of trader? Awesome, Jack. Thanks for having me, man. Real pleasure. Um, so TrendSpider, we are a web-based technical analysis platform. Uh, we're built for the technical analyst ranging from beginner to advanced. Uh, we have a lot of really cool automated features, some proprietary chart types, uh, you know, really, really dynamic and multi-factor alert system, scanner, back tester, all this good stuff. And, you know, I really feel that uh, your subscribers will get a really good use out of this and, and will definitely uh, utilize the, the, the powerful aspects that we offer. So. Cool. So why don't you, why don't we dive right into like, tell me about the automatic trends that you guys offer and how I can use them to create an edge in the market. Cause right. That's what everybody wants to do. How do I get an edge, Tony? Tell me about using the automatic trends. Of course. Yeah. So we offer uh, three different automated uh, systems on the TrendSpider platform. It's the trends, the auto fib and the heat map. So if I select trends here in the, the top left corner, it'll automatically draw trend lines here for you uh, based on a calculation and algorithm system. So right now I'm showing just the top 1% of trend lines that you know, TrendSpider is finding. If you click the three little dots next to trends, you could bring up the analysis preferences and you know we have three different settings, different analysis types, original, enhanced, and standard. Original is gonna show you the least amount of lines. Enhanced, if I hit enhanced and hit apply, it's gonna show you some more trend lines. And then standard is just a combination between the two. I like personally, like I like to flip through all three of them. I like to see what I'm looking for. Um, and if I find anything uh, that catches my eye that I feel like you know is, is holding trend, I, I would save them, right? So you have a few more settings here, your input, drawing input. You could choose to draw the trend line between the highs and the lows, which is the wick of the candle, the open, the close, which is the body of the candle. And then you can also choose to set to uh, ignore or respect gaps. Uh, I personally like to start top down. I'll go original. I always keep wick highs and lows. That's just a personal preference on how I like to use tr uh, the trends feature. And I ignore the gap. So if I hit apply here, It'll show me that top 1%, right? So right over here to the right, it's showing you the most relevant. If I click more lines, show you more lines. If I click all unfiltered, it's going to show you every trend line that it's finding under that setting. So if I go here to enhance and I hit apply and I'm under the all, all unfiltered version of the trend lines, it shows you every single trend line that uh, trend spiders finding, uh, you know, it's, it's some people, you know, would say that this is, they like to start top down like this. I personally like to just keep it on most relevant just to show me what's on there. Uh, the top 1%, right? So something to keep in mind here with all of our automation features, we have this truth and analysis timestamp, which is this vertical line here. It's this yellow vertical line. Whenever you first turn on the trends feature, it, it'll, it'll timestamp it right? Trends feature or auto fib or the heat map. It timestamps the day and time that you first turned it on. So if I hover over here at the bottom, it says here on December 10th, 2020 at 2029, uh, you know, PM, whatever, 8, 8, 8.30 PM, 
I created this, this, this trends feature. So it doesn't refresh for you every single day, but if you wanted to refresh it to take into account all of this future price action, because it's not being taken into account in the calculations and the algorithm, you can cover over here and click refresh and lock. Just a little tip before you do that, you might want to save some of these trend lines onto your drawings. And to do that, you would just double click on your drawings on the trend line and let's say I like this one, I like this one, I like this one as well. You know, it'll save it on your drawings. Now, my drawings are turned off. I'm sure I'm probably going to turn this on. I'm going to have some more analysis on NEO. So if I turn it on, you can see that I have some Fibonacci's. You know, Jack and I trade the same way with the Fibs. Um, so I have those on there. So then when you turn on the turn off the trends feature, those trend lines that I just added are on your chart. Right. If you wanted to delete them, you can just right click, remove this ray or to delete any drawing, you could just hold shift and click left click over that um, that trend line. Right. So if I turn off my drawings here, I turn the trends back on. I have this on. If I refresh and lock, it might update, but it did take away one of those trend lines there. So just a little tip before you refresh and lock, if it's you know way in the past here, this timestamp. Take, take a look and see if you want to save anything on there and then uh, refresh and lock to what you're looking for, right? So that's the first automated feature that we offer. You know, trend lines, it's calculation-based, it's algorithm-based. We're not, you know, sometimes when we're in a biased position, we like to start drawing funky stuff and to, to go in the direction of our bias. So ha knowing the fact that this is a purely calculation-based automated feature it kind of tells you like okay hey like i'm not drawing any funky trend lines just because i think or i want this stock to go in the direction that i'm looking for right yeah okay. re re just to cut you off real quick that's reinforcement bias drawing technical indicators and reinforce your bias but i see we're here on the daily chart why don't we just just to kind of give another view of this because i mean this is the first time i've seen what you're showing honestly i really like it why don't you let's pick a popular stock um, I want to go with Tesla just because everybody knows it. And let's go on the four hour because I want to do a different stock on a different time frame just to kind of see what we're looking like. And I mean, Tesla's trending so aggressively, it might be better to pick like a stock that's consolidating. So if this doesn't look too good on the four hour, feel free to switch it up to just another popular stock. But uh, yeah, I'm, does it work on the four hour? I'm, I'm, I'm really happy you asked that question. So all of our automated features, they change the calculation and the trend lines, for example, on every time frame. So if I do go down to the four hour chart, it's going to show you new trend lines. And so you can save these trend lines by double clicking on them on the four hour and then flip down to a smaller time frame. let's say like the hourly, it's going to show you some more, right? And then you could double click and save whichever ones you'd like, and you'll be able to see those trend lines on all time frames. Uh, so it's a really cool uh, feature that you can you you can flip back and forth between all the time frames and get a new. So, I'm sorry, can you see the daily time frames on the hourly, the daily trend Correct. lines on the hourly chart, or do you yep. see just okay, okay, yep. go yep. go through that let for me. Let me go. Uh, let me click one uh, stock that I haven't drawn all over. So CRSR. Let me see my drawings. Okay, so I just have some horizontal uh, levels there with some alerts attached to them. So let's say like, you know, you could see here, here's my timestamp when I first created uh, the timestamp for uh, Corsair Gaming. So if I want to save these ones prior to, uh, you know, deleting, uh, updating it, I would just double click here, double click. And let's say I'll, I'll refresh and lock here. You know, it just gave me some new trend lines here. So I do like this one for a third touch potentially. I'll double click that, I'll save it. Now I'll go down, I'll go back to the daily chart and it'll show them up here, right? If I double click here uh, and save a new one, double click here, let's see, and then turn off my trend. So if I go back to the hourly chart here and I select these, you can right click here, go to properties and it gives you this option to show the visibility. You would just simply change that to all time frames. And then you'll be able to show all of these on all the time frames. So I think I selected this one, all time frames. Select this one, properties, go to all time frames. And then it'll 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 show that on every single time frame here. So if I go to the daily, it's showing those those same ones on the lower time frame. So those, so that's the that's the trends feature now. 
the other automated feature that we have is the auto fib. If I select the auto fib, it's the same thing. It's going to use that truth and analysis timestamp. I'm going to delete my manual lib, my manual fibs here. So I'll delete these trend lines just so we get a clear view of the chart. So the auto fib now, it's it's basically looking for it's looking for the most recently completed move using a previous swing high or low. And again, excuse me, you if you go down to like a four hour, let's say an hourly chart. It's going to show you a new sequence, right? Um, so something that I like to do, and I have my fibs set up the same way as Jack. Uh, I have the 78.6, the 61.8, the 50%, uh, the 38.2, and then my targets below here. You can right click on this, go to properties. You can add and remove any Fibonacci retracements that you're looking for. You can reverse uh, the fib sequence. Uh, to draw it as an extension. Some people like to draw extensions in this way. Uh, Jack and I use extensions differently. Uh, you can choose to fill in the middle, uh, choose the stroke and the color as well, and then choose to show it on all time frames as well. So what's cool with this is that any, uh, any automated feature, uh, you, can, you can attach an alert to it. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. Um, and I'll show you that's called a dynamic alert. Tony, man, those trend line automatic. I mean, that's, that's incredible. I draw trend lines, but sometimes you're not going back far enough or you're not looking at all the time frames. So that's a super helpful tool, especially for like the newer trader who doesn't have all of the practice. That's just straight data unbiased. So I really like that idea, even a cross reference your own technical analysis, but I heard you guys have a proprietary candle that you've created through your data analysis. And I want to, I want to learn more, more about that. So why don't you dive into what that is and what it's called? Cool. Yeah. So the, the proprietary candle that we have is called the raindrop candle. You can switch through it right here in the top left and charting type, you select raindrop. And so what raindrop candle is telling you, it's basically splitting the candle into two. So in this instance here, we're on a daily time frame, so it's splitting the day into two. It's taking into account the volume weighted average price and basically giving you a visual representation of the volume on the day, the first half of the day and the second half of the day. So the reason why this is a green candle is because this little tick here on the left is below the tick on the right, which means the volume weighted average price on the first half of the day is lower than the second half of the day. So vice versa for a red candle, right? So it's kind of really telling you where most of the volume was traded at, at the first half and the second half. So, but what's really cool about this is that sometimes you get these blue raindrop candles. The blue raindrop candles is when the volume weighted average price is equal from the first half and the second half. So if I go to the spiders here, the SPY, and I'll give you, I'll show you here, I'll turn off my drawing so you get a little bit better look on the candle. You can see here on November 3rd, which was the election night we had a blue raindrop candle. Uh, a few of us at, in the office here were, were spotting this the day it happened. So what's interesting with the blue raindrop candle is that it it's tends to be an area of price discovery. It tends to follow, uh, be followed uh, by volatility. Um, so you can see here that we had this big gap up on, on election night we had this blue raindrop candle. And then if you kind of go back in history here, you can see that almost the high of this blue raindrop was the volume weighted average price of this blue raindrop. So it's very cool that, hey, we filled a gap. We're election night here. We're also testing this big area, this, this median level of this range, right? And then look what happens followed. We are just gap up, rip, you know, little consolidation, gap up, stall. But essentially this was an amazing little pivot here uh right so so something i watched here is when we had this gap up in blue raindrop you know I, i'm kind of going to take this and and look at the same thing and say well you know what this is this is an area of price discovery you know i i, I personally don't want to see us get below back this vwap and then and then you know kind of have a difficult time to get back above it so that's one way to use those. Another way to use it is I know on Tesla, if I go to Tesla, we got something called a balloon raindrop, right? So a balloon raindrop is when you can see here, it's basically like a balloon, 
most of the volume was traded near the highs of the session and, and near the, the, the close of the session. And, you know, you could just see what happened the next day. You know, we ripped, right? So same thing. If you have your trends feature on, you know, it, back when you were about right over here, I had a trend line just, that just was- to, Just to quickly pause you, Tony, you're referring to that candle as a raindrop, but like is- I'm looking at the purple ones, assuming that the purple ones are the raindrop. No, the purple one is a blue raindrop. This is a balloon raindrop. So balloon it's balloon raindrop. Yeah, you yeah. Know, is there an automatic way to highlight that candle type? So there's a way to actually scan for something like this, and I'll definitely show you that afterwards. You know, okay, it doesn't happen okay. that it doesn't happen that often. So when you get a couple results out, you know, they're worth looking at. Um, you can see here as well that, you know, we had another balloon raindrop candle here as well. Um, so it's another way to visually uh, add the volume onto the candle, similar to like a volume profile, but you're actually just throwing it on there on the candle on any time frame. You can go all the way down to the 10 minute candle uh, for the So raindrop. these are all, these are basically volume, volume candles. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's showing you a visual representation by like pulling out, you know, you know, from And this, this works on every time frame? Uh down to the 10 minute time frame for the range. Okay. Of the okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I like to sometimes I'll go to the 15 minute or even the hourly and you just, you know, Jeez. I yeah, I suggest just kind of going through them and, and seeing like what you can find, what kind of observations you can find, but you know, most of the time they're they're found at areas of price discovery, pivot points, um, and then they tend to followed followed by you know volatility. Uh, mm -hmm. It's definitely something that like you know you you need to just kind of go through and see like all right well and observe and, and see you know what happens in the next time. So it's a very very cool feature, um, especially seeing it happening on the spiders on election day and then it was just gap up rip. So uh, very cool uh, charting type. Definitely worth a look. Okay, cool. Um, well, let's then move into the next thing, which is like any other indicators that are proprietary to you outside of the raindrop. Is there something that you want to mention that you really, really like? Yeah. So we have um, we have something called the anchored VWAP. The anchored VWAP is just a volume weighted average price, but you're able to anchor it from wherever you'd like. Um, so you can add this in your indicators. You could just go right click, uh, left click on the three little dots. You could type in VWAP and it's right there, Alpha Trends Anchored VWAP. If I select that, and I actually already have it in here, um, you have different anchor to dates that you can, you can set it to. So if I click this drop down here, you can anchor it from a highest volume, highest high, lowest low, blue raindrop, a gap, uh, day to date, all the way to year to date. I personally like to hit year to date I want to show that year to date volume weighted average price. Uh, so when I add it into my indicators list, I can just click onto the next symbol here and it'll automatically show Knox obviously doesn't go too back. Uh, here's NVIDIA, you know, and I like to have that standard uh, as I'm scrolling through the symbols. But now what's really cool about TrendSpider is that you have the option to anchor VWAP from wherever you'd like. You can put just by right clicking on a candle, right? I'm just gonna go back to my standard Japanese candlesticks, right? So you're able, I like to draw these at a, extreme highs and extreme lows or high lows or lower highs, whatever it is, right? So if I were to right click here, let's say, uh, this is Neo, you right click on the candle, you have the option to create an Alpha Trends Anchor view up here. And you can just see that Neo struggled a little bit to get above here until it did. You know, then we had a few days here where, you know, some some support support you know so it held this this VWAP so I like to so for for the brand new trader Tony before you go any further what does VWAP stand for and why is using a VWAP an advantage as opposed to a normal moving average sure the VWAP is taking into account the volume so it's the volume weighted average price from an anchor date so it's pulling all this data from this date using price and volume so it's basically telling you average buyer from this day is at this line, right? So it's, it's an area that you can use is, is, is you could just, you know, uh, observe for yourself and see that, you know, price does react around at these levels, just like it does in intraday VWAP. Um, so what's cool about this, like if I, I like personally like to draw my VWAPs from the start of a month. So let's say I were to start it at October 1st, right click, 
you can see that, you know, Neo kind of sat around here a little bit in the beginning of the month, first half of October, gap up, rip, came down, tested this almost perfectly and just absolutely ripped. So, uh, we, so the biggest difference between using like a normal, so this is special to you guys. So you guys have a volume weighted anchor moving average versus like if I'm just using a moving average, it's only considering price. Mm -hmm. You guys have an indicator that is special to you guys that is considering price, um, time, volume, and a very specific date. So that is really a true edge right there. And that's why, I mean, you know, these examples you're showing, because the way I see it is when you're just using a normal moving average, you're not considering the amount of volume, the amount of shares that are traded. But when you're picking an important date event, whether it's like a breakout or an earnings event, that's really helping, you know, make a clear depiction on where is the volume weighted moving average because that exactly. is where the money is coming in so i'm really a fan of this indicator it's a it's, it's a fantastic indicator. like so i like to draw it again like i showed you from here from the high you know you could see that you know we call this a pinch uh because they're pinching together you could see that neo just broke below here came up touched this almost perfectly another bid off the longer October monthly view off from that anchor. And then we broke above it just a little bit on Friday and then we closed just in line with it. Right. So it's a very cool uh, indicator. Definitely requires a little bit of time to just kind of mess around and do some analysis and back testing on your own to see how you can utilize it. But this is how I personally use it. And I found great success using it. Um, the other one that I, is, you know, it's really great. It's just, it's, it's a volume by price. You can click the three little dots here. You can type in VBP and it, you click volume by price. Again, I already have this in here. You have the same anchor two features or options that you do with the anchored VWAP, right? I personally like to start year to date. I'll hit apply right over here. I'll just toggle on the volume by price and it'll start pulling that that volume by price for each level from a certain date. So it's pulling all that data. It's got, you got your point of control over here. It's the highest volume traded from the start of the year. Uh, and then you also kind of just look at these peaks and troughs, you know, we had very low volume here. We had a big gap, right? And then you just kind of see like most of the volume is traded around here in this consolidation area. Most of the volume in this time was traded around this consolidation area. Same likewise here, right? So it's just another uh, indicator that I use for multiple confluence zones, you know, on top of our FIBs, you know, your anchored VWAP, you got like your moving averages there, you got a trend line, then you confirm it with this volume by price, just see what's going on over there. It's it's just a nice visual picture to to have on your chart at all times. Now you can even just click on this vertical line right and just click and drag and you can start pulling the data from here now you know so let's say you want to pull the data just from this highest high wow do that wow, as well and it, just, <laughs> and it just updates right away for you you know i could just click and drag right here click here and i can see the actual numbers here right so it, it's super user friendly. It's very fast to navigate around all this stuff once you figure out where everything is. It does not take that long. Um, and since I added it onto my indicators list, I can just you know click another symbol here and just you know it'll automatically do that for you. That's amazing, dude. Um, can you d dive into a little bit of the detail of the multi time frame analysis tool that you guys? have because i'm a big fan of looking at things on the weekly the daily and the four hour at a minimum to make trading decisions that i consider to be like a swing so i like to be able to use you know multiple time frames and I, you were telling me something about the, like a, a really easy tool you guys have and that sounds cool so i want to learn more about that if you could dive yeah so the multi time frame analysis it is uh one of my probably my favorite feature of the platform it allows you to overlay a higher time frame indicator on a lower time frame or the current time frame chart that you have up, right? So I'll give you a real time example here for NEO. Uh, I was short NEO during all that China legislation. I was short, I was long puts. Um, you know, I was at a 15 minute chart. And right over here, I'm just going to put the day break here so we can see the days. So now we're on a 15 minute chart here and you can see when I click multi time frame analysis here, it allows you to, it gives you this extra feature here. It says versus none. If I select daily, right, it's going to put these extra little 
this this little icon here that says th that's for the 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 time frame that you're versing. So this is the daily, right? So now I'm showing, and like if I want to show the 34 days of moving average that I use a lot. On, the, on this 15 minute chart, I can do that just by clicking this icon and showing it. So it's representing that higher time frame indicator in a dashed format on your 15 minute chart. So if I show you what the 15 minute 34 day looks like, it's a solid line here. So that's how you can separate them and know like, okay, what's it going? Those anchored VWAPs that I drew on the daily, here they are in a dashed format. Now you zoom in a little bit, you can see how beautiful this was here how beautiful bid off here and here right so the way i use this is you know on this day neil likes to you know we had that china legislation all that heat that was coming out delisting uh, neil likes to come down and then have these huge short squeezes so i did get short it was also a 50 percent fib from the highs you know jack you know a lot about that um so i did get short pre-market uh, they decided to put a buy rating on it, which was even better, uh, put some liquidity into the market and it just started dumping, right? So what I do, I like to use the Bollinger Bands a lot on the daily chart. So I'll throw my Bollinger Bands here. I have my mid Bollinger here. Here's the, the upper Bollinger Band. And so I literally got short, held it for like 45 minutes. Once I saw it, you know, get a bid and jump like 30 cents in like a second, I was like, you know what, mid Bollinger's here, I'm taking the position off, right? So I was able to overlay this higher time frame indicator on my 15 minute chart while I'm day trading rather than having multiple tiles, you know, different windows and just doing my analysis like that. Um, so like I said, this is probably one of my favorite features of the platform. Uh, not only did it continue, it gapped down you know, sold at the open, bid off that anchored VWAP, and then just had a huge rip, right? So, uh, you know, we all know that higher time frame, uh, you know, higher time frame indicators uh, affect short term price. Uh, higher time frame trends rather affect short term price. So, it's it the having the option to um, overlay this on a lower time frame is pretty awesome. So, highly suggest messing around with this one and and seeing what you find and how you can incorporate it into your strategy. Wow, man. I mean, going through this, there's so much fantastic information for anybody here who's watching this on YouTube right now. I already feel like, you know, with Tony explaining this, there's so many valuable tools in such a short window. I encourage you guys to share this video with your friends who trade, um, whether, you know, share it on your Instagram, share it on your Facebook, share it to your buddies who trade, because this is one of the most influential technical analysis instructional videos i've ever seen on a software and that's coming from a guy who's been trading for 14 years uh and so i don't say that lightly whatsoever and i encourage you guys to just you know share this information because it's incredible i'm going to be watching this video over again and you know even any of you guys on youtube you, you should watch it over again too because there's so many valuable lessons in this video and you're, you can waste so, so much time going through useless content on the internet we've all are guilty of it so make sure sure you save this video and you know if you don't remember there is a link below to actually get access to the software absolutely free as a trial and then i just want to move into the next thing that you guys have which is the alert system like i understand like i mean i'm at my desk all day but i think really an important part of any piece of technical software is an alert system that somebody can utilize where they don't have to stare at it all day like if you know what you want to see and tony i want you to go over something that you like to see how you set that alert and then go through the process of how that alert is delivered, because that's going to be a super useful tool for anybody who works, uh, you know, or just doesn't have their eye on the ball all the time, because, you know, we all know that's impossible and we want to see very specific things. So run into that one for me. Cool. Yeah. So remember those trend lines that we made, we double clicked on them, we saved them, you know, we had a FIB sequence that we liked, we added that in there as well. You can right click on any drawing or any indicator and create an alert off of it, right? So, you know, halfway back, uh, short here in NEO, right? Looks like we just cannot get above it. We also, if I open up this, the, open up the indicators again here and I turn on my anchored VWAPs that I created, nice double confluence there, right? We just, we just can't get above it. I want to create an alert on if we get back up to this 50% FIB, right? And this applies to all drawings, 
all indicators. All you have to do, and it's called this dynamic alert, you just simply right click on it, create alert at this line, and it prompts you to this box here, right? I'll just move it to the side here so you can see. Now you have three different types of triggers. You have a breakthrough, touch, or bounce, right? So you, can, you have to select one, you can select all three, doesn't matter. Uh, you also have the option here to change the sensitivity so if you want to add a sensitivity, a little buffer area before it gets to that line or wherever area of interest that you're looking to create the alert at, you can do that as well. So here it says alert fires within 70 cents of the selected line. Just real quick pause. I've never seen this type of uh, dynamic alert system in any software trading. This is this is really mind blowing. Just that's awesome. Yeah. So what's Continue. really cool about it is like you um, it, you have a nine to five you're working you can't look at the screens all day this alert system like not even just the dynamic alert system but the multi-factor that i'll get into after it really really pairs nicely with the nine to five or like you will just scan through your stocks you make your alerts and then once you get your alert in an area of interest that you're looking for to trade or invest in a stock you get the alert and then you can take a look at the screen rather than, you know, we know how addicting this industry is. You just want to watch that stock all day, all day, all day. And it does nothing. Right. So once you set this alert, you can set it and forget it, you know, whatever you want to say. So um, you have the sensitivity here now, right? You also choose your confirmation candle, right? So if it's set to daily, if the price breaks through touches or bounces within 49 cents here of this area, uh, it's going to get the, you're going to get the alert at the end of the day, right? So just make sure if you want to get it earlier and you want it, your day trading, you just click this drop down, you go to 10 minute, right? It'll allow you to get the 10 minute, once a 10 minute candle breaks or touches or bounces within that area, you'll get the alert. Uh, and something to be aware of, if you create the alert on a four hour time frame or below, you can go down to a five minute candle confirmation. Uh, confirmation candle, right? So just keep that in mind, right? You can name it. You can add a little note, like 50% halfway back short. You know, that's how, uh, you know, startup trading is what's fib based, right? You go expiration, choose how many days you want to keep it living in the system. Uh, each package has a different, a uh, expiration date. Uh, and then you can choose to trigger one to 20 times. So if you want this price to, to if it just dilly dallies back and forth, up and down above it, up to 20 times, you'll get that alert. You'll get a text message, you'll get an email. You also get a little notification here at the top right uh, that'll show you the alert. If you're not on this tab, in the top left here, you'll see a little red little box uh, that's kind of flashing with a little with a little sound there that'll, that'll notify you, right? So if I hit create alert here, it'll, it'll go right into my alerts widget here on the right. Uh, and it'll be living there until either of those two conditions are met, the 20, 20, uh, 20 times uh, touch or the expiration date, right? So that's a dynamic alert. It applies to all 99% of the indicators and all the drawings, right? So, you know, I attached it here to FIB. You can see I already have one here active for the trend line. Um, it, it just barely missed it. I did have one here on this one as well. I did have it on the anchored VWAP. Um, you know, that did trigger as well. So, to, you know, anchored view up, right click, create alert, same process, right? So now that's a dynamic alert. Now, the other type of alert that we have, and I'll turn off my drawings here now, it's called a multi-factored alert, right? So if I, if I turn on my five day and 13 day EMA, and I'll turn off all my other anchored view ops, I personally like to keep the chart clean and then turn things on and off, right? So NEO was something that I've been tracking for a while. I've been trading it for a while. Um, I, I wanted to know when this five EMA was to cross below this 13 EMA. Um, and you know, I had, all I did was create a script and created an alert for that, right? So now let's say I wanted to create an alert and it probably already would have triggered here at the end of the day. When the five got back above the 13 EMA, right? Click create alert, multi-factor alert. It brings you this multi-factor alert box and where you build the scripts, right? Cool thing about the scripts is that you can save them as templates. You can apply it into other areas of the platform that you know I'll, I'll show you guys after, right? So if I wanna do a simple moving average crossover, I would go add parameter here, create condition, select your time frame. In this instance, the daily time frame. We're using an indicator here. So select indicator, 
going to find our EMA. Here's the five EMA. Then you have these options, cross, crossed up, decreased, greater than. We're looking for crossed up. And then another indicator, select our time frame, again, the daily, and then the 13. And that's it. And you just made an alert here for uh, a, a five EMA crossing above 13. So if I click create alert, it goes into your widget here, right? So let's say now I'm flipping through my stocks, my, my watch list. I go to Kirk here. You know, Kirk is already above that. Let's say I find like Jemima. Let's see a stock that's maybe just downtrending right here, right? So here's the here's Google. I want to know when Google, the five gets back above the 13. I, all I have to do is hover over the alert we just made. This little page icon, icon is the clone icon. I hit clone, create alert, and I just copied that same multi-factor alert onto Google. And so you can quickly just power through them and add this same alert to other symbols on your watch list, right? So now you can take this a step further here. You can open this back up cl by clicking the, the pencil icon next to the clone icon. You can save this script now. I go script action, save as a template. I go five EMA, five EMA cross above 13 EMA. I hit save. Now I save this as a template, right? So now I can incorporate this script into an other area of the platform, which is the scanner. You know, I'm gonna show you the scanner here next. So right here in the top right-hand corner, you just hit scanner. Now, if I wanna scan for stocks from an indice list that we provide for you, Dow Jones, S&Ps, Russell, or your personal watch list, I can look for stocks that are meeting this criteria, right? So let's say I wanna add that script in there. I go script actions, load from template, I type in 5 EMA, and I already have this because I use this quite a bit, cross up 13, there it is. Now I just added that on the daily time frame, the 5 EMA crosses up on the daily time frame, the 13 EMA, I'm going to find stocks that are meeting this criteria, right? Dude, that's incredible. So what past, that's all included, that's in the scanner too, right? So we're yeah. scanner and then like do from there, like, can I back test this stuff or how mm -hmm. does that work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, it's, it's very cool how, how easily one area of the platform is, is very quickly translated into other areas. That's, uh, you know, another, aside from like, you know, multi-time frame analysis, the scripting actions and the ability to import it into a scanner and then, um, you know, throwing it into the, the tester. So, you know, you would just, you can click your scan here, whatever you want to scan for, you hit composite, NASDAQ composite, scan, and you're going to get results that are meeting this criteria, right? And this is where you can start stacking more stuff. So let's say now we want to back test something like this, right? I already have some, some uh, information here. I'll delete it. Let's start fresh. So now when you hit tester here, we can, uh, you, you have your entry conditions here and your exit conditions on the right. Now, uh, you choose your time frame here daily, how deep you want to go back in the scan, in the, the tester, 7,000 candles to chart or just to chart, trade by the next open, high, low, close, high plus low divided by two, all these combinations, long only or short only, right? So let's say we want to import our script here. We go load from template, we do our five EMA cross below 13 or cross above, we'll do cross above, select a template, right? So now we added our entry conditions. We're getting long when the five EMA crosses above the 13 EMA, right? This is just a very generic script. You can add so much more, even on the market scanner, you, you add a volume constraint, you could do breakouts, uh, you can do inside days, outside days. Uh, it's really endless. There's a lot of, a lot of cool things that you can do. Um, and you don't have to be a rocket scientist or a coder to do any of this stuff. That's why it's, 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 you know, very user-friendly. So that's our entry conditions. We can add another script here. Let's say you want to add a script. You want to do like, you know, add parameter condition. We go indicator. We'll, we'll check out RSI just to, just to throw something in here. We could just type in RSI, you know, is, is greater than a constant value of 80. That's going to be our exit condition, right? You can do a number of candles pass. You could do a take profit. In this instance, we have the script. You can add a stop loss and a trailing stop. So if we add a stop loss here, we go 
add that. We hit test here. Now we're testing Google. Google is going to show us this strategy here. And if I zoom out, it's telling us if we did this strategy right here in the tabular data, it says data analyzed 16 years. If we did this strategy in Google, we would have yielded 2,400% plus versus a buy and hold of 3,300%. We took 26 positions. We had 15 wins, 11 losses. Our max drawdown, not per position, but from the highs, was 34%. Average win was 35%. Average loss was 10% because we set a 10% stop loss. Average return was 16.28%. So the cool thing is that it gives you all this data here. It shows you here. It shows you just a, even just a random control bot uh, right over here when it's just buying and selling. If you hit C on chart, it's going to show you here. Let me delete my fibs. It's going to tell you where you got long and where you got out. So here we're long currently. We still haven't gotten out yet. That RSI hasn't hit 80 yet on Google, right? So if I zoom back, you can see we, we, got, we got long here, got stopped out. We got long. That's where we got out up here. You know, so it's a very cool way to easily implement a script from one area to the other, scan for stocks that meet that criteria and look for that setup every single time uh, rather than having to scan and look at the same thing every day. And then you have the opportunity to go back and back test that strategy with data. You know, download the CSV, you can export an, an Excel format, save these. I, I have multiple strategies that I go back, you know, long-term, short-term, uh, day trading strategies that I just save and I just go and analyze all the time. Um, and it helps me give, gives me a better picture of the market condition uh, and what strategy works better for that type of market and move. Awesome, man. Well, I think, um, you know, we're getting towards the end of the, the video here, been probably close to an hour. I don't even know how long we've been going at it. So we with that being said, man, first of all, thank you for showing up here and, you know, teaching me and teaching the audience, everybody out there listening who's lasted this long in the video. Obviously, you're dedicated to the craft. So as a reminder, link below to sign up for a free trial. And then, Tony, if you want to just talk about the pricing models, you know, we don't want to, like, just pretend like this is a totally free software. Obviously, this software has a ton of value and value costs money. If you want to use a free app like Robinhood, you're never going to get this type of detail. It's cost money and sophisticated programs to build such an awesome product, but they do offer it for free as a trial. After that, there is a monthly free. So if you just want to quickly break down what that sure. monthly free is, you can just go over the first two levels. We don't have to get major into it, but I just want to know sure. what people are getting into after like obviously all of the value provided, I mean, I'm willing to pay for something like this and anybody who knows value, you got to pay up for it. So yeah, 100%. So we do offer that seven day trial to get into it and, and get familiar with the program, right? We have three different packages per me, per premium, elite and master. Uh, this is a monthly subscription. You also have the option to pay for the year up front. You save 16% uh, off the top. Um, you know, 396, 780, and 1164. They all have different features here that are included and some that are not included. Uh, you know, alerts change, scanning results change, uh, alerts expirations change as well as you go up in the package, right? We do have sales pretty, pretty frequently. Um, some, some good sales where, you know, you'll get some right off the top. So I definitely suggest signing up for the trial, seeing how you like it. Um, the thing that comes with trend spiders that we have a fantastic customer service, you have a problem or you're trying to build something or you have a question. All you have to do is go on your platform right here, go to the contact us and type out your question. Like I need help with the scanner. I need help building a script. How do I do this? How do I do that? And, you know, we get back to you guys fairly quickly. Um, uh, we do have a almost a 24 hour customer service um, that will help guide you and get the most out of the platform and help utilize your uh, trading strategy and journey. And, you know, we want to help you as much as possible and cater to you uh, so you can get the, the most out of the platform. So. All right, Tony, thank you for sharing all of that information. That was absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, 
if you are a trader, you understand it takes money to make money, whether it takes you know money in your account. And I have no problem paying for a premium service. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Obviously, this is way more in, in detail than any Robinhood or any like free apps because that's not going to help you trade. You have to have a product that offers serious market edge and serious value. And that's exactly what Tony has demonstrated here today with TrendSpider. So make sure you guys sign up with that link below. Uh, it's right below this video. That'll help us out. Make sure that we get credit for, you know, putting you and sending you as a customer. Super, super appreciated if you do that. Also, you know, sharing this video to your friends who are serious about learning how to trade. There's a seven day free trial. Even if you don't decide to sign up for the monthly or the yearly, just dive into it. Trading and learning how to trade is all about experimenting. And that's what TrendSpider does is it offers you an experimental uh, week to really get into it. So make sure you are taking advantage of that. But thank you guys for listening here today. Smash that like button, subscribe to the Startup Trading YouTube channel. And Tony and I will come in, be coming at you with more or TrendSpider content uh, for now. So we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.